R2, the pseudoscalar is E1, E2, or uh, any scaled version of that also works. So you could have three E1, E2, or so forth. <coughs> so a, if we want to multiply some arbitrary vector by this, what happens? It, it rotates that vector. And so this, an easy way to see this is to look at a polar form of a vector. So in polar form, E1 cos theta plus E2 sine theta is the parametric representation of a vector in two dimensions. So if E1 is this way and E2 up, some vector length r, angle theta, That's E1 cos theta on the horizontal and E2 sine theta on the vertical. You can write this in exponential form as well, which is nice, by factoring out E1. So we factor out E1, this is cos theta plus E1 2 sine theta, because E1 times E1 is 1 in geometric algebra. Uh, E1 E2 We'll write that as i. And we'll write that as i because i squared. It's e1, e2, e1, e2, or e1 times minus e1, e2, e2, and e1, e1 is 1, and e2, e2 is 1, so we're left with minus 1. continue. So we have r is magnitude times e1 e to the i theta. There's a nice tidy form for a polar vector in geometric algebra in a plane, where the, pl the orientation of the plane is represented by the bivector i in this case. You could use an arbitrary plane if you felt like. You could say I is some vector A wedged with another vector B divided by the square root of the square of the wedge product AB. So that would also be I uh, would also multiply out to minus one have all the properties desirable, but it would be in the plane of, of A, B. So this is the pseudoscalar for that plane. I'm going to use the pseudoscalar for the plane. The unit you know, XY plane. So this is the I that I'm going to use in this case. So if we have a polar for representation of a vector, like r equals r e1 e, e to the i theta, and we'll multiply that by i, we get r e1 e to the i theta i, and i commutes with e to the i theta, so we're left with r e1 i e to the i theta, or r I'll write out i in this case, e1, e1, e2, those cancel, e to the i theta. So r times the pseudoscalar is r e2, e to the i theta, or r e2 cos theta plus e2, e1, e2 sine theta. Two cos theta, and this is minus e1, e2, and the e2s cancel. We're left with minus e1 sine theta. We can draw these out. So uh, we can also just write them out. 
Okay, let's draw one. So, E1, E2, and our vector, suppose our initial vector was Here's our initial vector. Now, if we have our cos theta, so here's our cos theta is there in the E2 direction, that will be this, and our sine theta in the minus E1 direction that so this is minus e1 sine theta and here we have our e2 cos theta that is this vector so here we have r and our i. Now if we're going, to, we're going to go the other direction, we take ir, so that is i is e1, e2, and we times r, e1, e to the i theta, and e1, e2 times e1 is minus e2, so that is minus r e2 the theta. So that is the negative. So we have r, i, r, and i, r. So we see graphically that multiplication by the pseudoscalar i produces a normal to the vector r. And depending on the order of the multiplication, you get a different direction for that normal. So you have IR in this direction and RI in this uh, going up and IR coming down. And since we could have equally as well used, we could have said I equals E2 E1, and that would have also had the property of i squared equals minus 1, then that would produce the opposite uh, rotation. So this would be here multiplying on the right with i of that equals e1, e2 rotates in the from the e1 direction towards the e2 direction. And the, if we'd used an oppositely oriented pseudoscalar for to represent uh, our imaginary, then the other direction would have been produced by the pseudoscalar multiplication. So this this uh, this uh, property of normal from from a pseudoscalar multiplication. This is called the duality transformation. In, uh, in some mathematics dialects, you would write something with a star. You would say that, say, uh, I think the notation is R star, or maybe it's R star star r I, I forget you see it in differential forms where you see i think it's like uh you say star of dx dy say and that would usually be something like like uh dz depending on the the on the space but the rough idea that produces these kinds of transformations is that we're multiplying by a pseudoscalar Do the same kind of thing in R three. 
in R3 if we have i equals e1, e2, e3, well, or equivalently e2, e3, e1, or e3, e1, e2. We can we can do any cyclic SYC cyclic. We can do a cyclic permutations of the pseudoscalar uh, factors, and it leaves it unchanged. So if we take e1 i, well that is e1 times e1 e2 e3 or e2 e3. Take e2 i, that is e2 times. I'm going to use this cyclic permutation to make life easier. E2, E3, E1. E2s cancel. We're left with E3, E1. And E3, I is E3 times E3, E1, E2. Let's cancel. And we're left with E1, E2. So for example, if we have E1, E2, and this plane is E1, E2, and the normal to that plane, E3, is we have E3, I, Z1, E2. We can go the other direction as well. I'm going to say that, suppose we have we have um, e2, e3, i, so that's e2, e3, times e2, e3, e1, here we have minus 1 times e1. If we take e3, e1, so e3 times e3, e1, e2, oops, e3, so e3, e1 times i, e1, e2, e3, Let's cancel, and we're left with minus e2. And so e2, e3, e3, e1, e1, e2. Times i's, e1, e2, e3. E1, E2 times E1, E2 is minus 1, so we're left with minus E3. So we're multiplying, if we take the pseudoscalar for the plane and we multiply it by I, we get the normal uh, up to a factor of plus or minus 1. And if we multiply the normal times the pseudoscalar, we get the, the plane that is perpendicular to it. And that again is up to a factor of plus or minus one depending on the orientation of the pseudoscalar. So we would either get a, a uh, counterclockwise oriented or a clockwise oriented uh, plane multiplying by I3, E3 times I depending on the orientation of the pseudoscalar that we chose to use. I'm just going to show a little example so of, let's suppose we take a, uh, an arbitrary vector, AE1 plus BE2. What happens so we multiply this by I? This is the duality transformation for, uh, for this particular vector in the plane. So if we had, let's say we have A, B 
So here's our vector a1 plus b2. So if we multiply this out, what do we get? A e1, e1, e2, e3, plus b, e2, e2, e3, e1. And that is a, e2, e3, plus b, e3, e1. And we can factor that as e3 times minus a, e2, plus b, e1. Now, that is minus a e2, e2, a e2 minus, and b e1, here, so, So one of the factors is normal to the original vector. So that is minus a e2 plus b e1. And the other factor is e3. So that is we have a plane that is perpendicular Every vector in this plane is perpendicular to the original vector. So you could you can draw that this way. So there is the so we take a vector and we'll multiply it by the pseudoscalar we end up with the plane that is perpendicular to that vector. That's the basic idea of a duality transformation. We're producing a normal, and that normal uh, in three-dimensional space maps a vector to a bivector that represents the plane that's perpendicular to that vector, or takes the plane and maps it to a, the normal to that plane. That's all. Thanks for listening. Bye.